Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to our Canucks GM mode. So, um, sorry I haven't made an episode in over a week. It's just because of work. I've been working every single Suns home game. And also, I was actually sick for a couple of days too, so um, I apologize for that. But anyways, let's get on to year number five, I think. Or, yeah, I think one of the two. So it'd be basically did which was... only player we signed, I think, was Frank Corrado. Um, I'll show you guys our roster just in case you don't remember or you didn't actually even watch last episode. Um, so in this episode, basically, we're going to be simming up to the trade deadline. And you guys can let me know what you want me to do at the deadline. So as you see, our first line has Kane, Horvat, and Granlund. Then you have Vertanen. I put Nolan Patrick as our second line center, even though he has 68 faceoffs. I just wanted to grow a bit. Um, so he's there with Kevin Fiala as well. And then Chris Wyman's in the NHL. Um, I was debating sending him down to the minors just because he's only an 80 and he's still listed as a minor scoring forward. Um, if we come to the deadline and there's a right winger available that's maybe a bit better than him, maybe we could send him down and get him to grow a bit more. Um, we'll probably send him down at the end of the season though just so he could play in the minors and maybe contribute to a Calder Cup or something if they go to the playoffs. Um, but currently he has put up 4 points in his first 10 Asian shell games which is pretty decent. He's also a minus 1 which isn't the best but it's not bad actually even for first 10 games. And he's also on the penalty killing unit so maybe our penalty kill will be doing good. I did change a few things up with that. Um, two penalty minutes only, and he's got a shorthanded goal already too, so, as you can see with that. So, that's Chris Wyman. Anyways, he's with Colt Castles and Anthony Mantha, and then you got Alex Tuck with Ruby Hints and Reed Boucher. Defensively, you will leave in Ben Hutton. Ben Hutton is going to be probably leaving the team at the end of the season. Reason being is, well, he does have one year left on his deal, um... But, however, um, we need to put in Jacobs eventually. Um, Jacobs is our scratch guy currently, and same with Frank Corrado. I'd like to play Jacobs, but I can't at the moment, so hopefully he doesn't lose morale because of ice time. Because that would be kind of annoying. But anyways, um, so you Levy and Hutton, you got Stetcher and Theodore, and Breezeball and Liljegren, so... But Liljegren's currently in the 81. He might be growing a bit. So hopefully he jumps up to like an 86 or something um, pretty soon. Because I know he does jump all of a sudden. So, And then goaltending wise, as you can see, Demko and Vasilevsky. And as I showed you, Scratch, Jacobs, and Corrado. Um, so that's our roster. Um, let's continue with the simulation and get it up to the deadline. See what's available. And then that will be this episode. Okay, so I also actually put Jacobs, I put Hutton, and I put um, some other player I can't remember on the trading block just so we could see some offers maybe for Ben Hutton if we want to trade him before the trade deadline. Um, I probably won't pull the trigger on any of those deals unless you guys think I should, so let's sim one month at a time, go up to December 1st. Our first game is up against Nashville, and Yana Coin is back for the AHL club right away. Okay, that's good. Um, Yana Coin, I don't know if he's going to even grow to be anything. But this guy was like a second round draft pick and he's currently 73. So maybe in a couple years he jumps into the NHL. He's got d really good shooting stats and skating stats. But other than that, he's not the best defensive defenseman. So, And we start off with a 3-1 win over Nashville. So that's good news. Let's go on a big winning streak and... We're going to just continue where we left off. It looks like win one, lose one. As we're now 6-6-0, six, six and, oh, and we got a trade offer. But this time it's for prospect guys, which is Backer was a first round pick a couple years ago, I think 2018. And Orlando Richards was a late pick. I do not want to give him up though at the moment for a second and a third. No, thank you. Even though that's pretty nice pick, so depending on, well, depends where Ottawa finishes. Um, send out our scout. We'll also check progress reports at the end of this as well, if I can remember. Um, and yeah, we'll just 
basically see how our players are performing like every two months or so. And we got another trade offer for backer, two thirds, no thank you. Hopefully we don't get too much trade offers for backer just because I don't want to have to keep on doing that in the video. So, And there's a nice back-to-back -back shutouts. I don't know if Demko is in net for both those games, but we win one nothing against the Jets and then 3 nothing over Carolina only to lose and win again. So it's still back and forth. We still win one, we lose one. So... I don't know if we're really going to be a playoff team this year, but um, we're definitely stepping in the right direction, I think. So, uh, Mikhail Granlin has been injured with back spasms. Estimated return is December 1st, so I'll edit the lines and see you guys in a second. Okay, guys, so I called up Sean Mathias. Um, reason being is we only had two defensive de depth players, so I had to call up some sort of forward. So, Sean Mathias is now on the fourth line. Um, hopefully... He contributes to that fourth line um, with like maybe good um, penalty killing or whatever. In the first game we have him, we went uh, four to one over Ottawa, only to lose to the Flyers. Our AHL club currently has a pretty decent record, nine five and three. Hopefully, their AHL club goes far this year. Then our youngsters can maybe get some good growth. And Granlin's already back. God damn it. I'll probably just keep Matthias up here just so we can use him as a depth player because or else we won't have any depth forwards. We'd have to put a depth defenseman in a forward spot, which is not really what I want to do. So Mikhail Granlund is back, but he's a bit injured. Hopefully that's fine. But we're going to put Granlund back to the first line. And there you go. Okay, let's go on a winning streak, guys. I haven't seen a winning streak all season. And now Stretcher has been injured with a hernia. For the rest of this month, it looks like or over a month actually. That's not a good injury to have, but at least Jacobs could come into the lineup and see what he's all about. We'll move Liljegren up, even though he's the lesser of the two overalls, just because I want Liljegren to grow a lot more than just an 81. And yeah, Jacobs could be our depth player currently. Okay. So yeah, we got a month without Troy Stetcher. That's not very good. I don't know why all these injuries are happening because I have the injuries set down to, I think, 8 or something. Uh, 8 out of 100. Um, okay, let's go another month or wait until Stretcher's back, pretty much. Hopefully we could go on a decent streak without Troy Stetcher. There you go. There's a nice win without Troy Stetcher, 5-2. And we got another trade offer again, that same one that we had before. So if you guys see any trade um, offers that actually make sense to do, uh, let me know with that. And give me a Chicago is another win. So maybe Jacobs is better to have in the lineup than Stetcher. I don't know. Maybe Stetcher becomes a trade asset because we've literally won three in a row now. Now we've won four in a row. Four and oh since Jacobs... Make that 5-0. and oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, this is good though. It's maybe this will help us propel into the playoffs, but there's a loss. Our record still doesn't look the best though. 16-14-1. But our AHL team seems to be killing it. Is there now 16-5-4? Make that 17-5-4. So at least Pulsers and all those guys, hopefully they grow to like an 82-83 for next season. And then we have to make some tough decisions again in the off season. who we get rid of. Um, because we'll probably get rid of definitely like someone like Reed Boucher or we could send him down to the minors. That's a type of idea. Um, so let's scout, where did we not scout in Canada? Let's scout the queue for now and then we'll go to the United States and then we'll probably go over to like Sweden or Finland. There's three more wins in a row. Starting to play better hockey. Hopefully this continues in the second half of the season. So Troy Stetcher is back. It's a bit early, so he might get re-injured. So hopefully um, he has the strength to actually recover from that. So Jacobs actually picked up a goal in that 11 games he played. Uh, minus one, 11 penalty minutes. Uh, not too bad. Surprised that he got a goal considering his, his puck skills, shooting categories, and stuff aren't that good. But good work, Jacobs, I guess. Um, so, Stetcher is back, which is good. 
So we'll move Stature back up to play with Shea Theodore and Lilligren back down to the top six defensive pairing. Um, I don't know why he doesn't grow sometimes, but it looks like he finally got his first NHL goal. As if you guys remembered last season, he put up no goals in that 82 games, but he picked up a lot of assists. So he finally got his first NHL goal this season. Hopefully more are to come, but I don't think he scores a lot of goals. I think he gets a lot of assists more. Um, I could be wrong with that, though. Okay, guys, so we have some player morale to deal with. Let's just see what it is. So, Jacobs isn't liking his ice time and the fact that he's scratched. Um, I'll just put that for now. Looks like Vasilevsky's growing. I don't know if it's just because of morale or what, but he's up to an 86 now, not, not an 85. Um, so, that is good news. Because that means now we have a better goaltending core. Maybe that's why we're winning more games. Okay, so let's just get to the first. So at January 1st, our record is 20-16-2, which is pretty decent. And our HL club, 27-4. and four. But we still have a lot of hockey left in this season. As I said, we're just going to go up to the deadline now. And we currently have the last wildcard spot in our division. Uh, we have 42 points, which is tied actually with Arizona, who's ahead of us. And only three points back of the Ducks. So that trade, I guess, with the Ducks must have helped them out because they're in a playoff spot right now. Let's just take a look at the player stats just for now and our, also our team stats just to see if our power player penalty kill has gotten better. So Nolan Patrick only has five goals, but he's got 29 points in 38 games. Kevin Fiala has got 28 points. Okay, wait, actually, let's sort by forwards and goals first. Jake Furtanen's got the most goals so far this season, 15. Fial's got 13. Kane's got 11. Tuck's actually got 11 too, so... I think in last season, uh, he puts around that much normally, but 11 uh, goals, and he's a plus 10, so... That's nice to see. Our fourth line is a plus this year. Uh, most assists is Nolan Patrick, and points is Nolan Patrick. Um, who's not performing? It's played a lot of games. Rupi hints 6 points in 38 games. I don't think this guy's going to stay with us that long. He is growing, but he's 24, so he's probably going to stop growing soon. Um, Manth is not performing actually that well. 11 points is still decent. And Chris Wyman's got 13 points in 38 games. So despite being an 80 overall, he's put up a decent amount of points. And his accuracy is going up in slap shots. It's actually pretty high up already, 90. So, but he hasn't scored that much goals. Um, okay, yeah, let's see the AHL. So far, since the AHL's been playing great, Tibbetts got a lot of points. He will be in the NHL probably next season. Balser's got a lot of points. Gaunt's, something like that. Lucas Elvin's not that much. Okay, so let's go to team stats quickly, and then we'll sim the rest up to the deadline pretty much. So... In an entire league. Let's see who's leading the league even currently. So it's still Calgary and Buffalo are playing very well. Um, let's see. Goals, four per game average. We are... Where are we? We're all the way down here with 2.71 goals per game. That's actually not too bad. We're still scoring more than we're conceding according to the goals against per game. Which, ours is around the middle, I think. Yep, right around the middle. Tied with St. Louis, Nashville, and Montreal. Interesting. And our power play percentage looks like shit. Yeah, we have one of the worst power plays in the league. So maybe we should change up the power play lines. Not sure what's wrong with those. But our penalty kill is definitely getting better. It's one of the top 15 teams, I believe. So that's decent enough. Um, our home record is 11-5-2, and, and our road record is 9-11-0, so we're a better home team than away team this year, and we're 6-3-1 and one in our last 10. Okay, so let's continue with the simulation. Okay, hopefully we could hold on to this playoff spot. We still have a lot of teams ca trying to catch up to us, so... Especially divisional games, these are the bigger of the games. We don't really care about if we um, lose to other teams, but divisional teams are important. And there's a trade offer for Ben Hutton, 
Pittsburgh wants Ben Hutton. They're willing to trade for him, even though he has one year left. So I guess he's a rental for them to get far in the playoffs. But they're willing to give up their first round pick from, um, I don't know if that's two years from now, and a second. That's a pretty nice offer right there. Uh, Pittsburgh's not even that. Well, they're listed as a champion, but their record's really bad. So this first, is that for this season? It might be for this season. Well, no, I don't think it's for this season. It's probably for like next season or the season afterwards. Um, but if you guys think I should do this deal, let me know in the comments. Because maybe that's a good trade to do. And we could just put Jacobs in instead of Hutton. So that's one of our trade offers. Let's just exit for now. We'll think about that come the deadline. So game against San Jose, this is big and we lose. It's a divisional loss. It's not good. And we got a, what the heck, a trade offer for Mikhail Granlin and Sean Mathias. Pittsburgh wants them as well. I'm not willing to trade uh, Mikhail Granlin and Sean Mathias for the same thing you're offering me for Ben Hutton. That's kind of a weird trade offer. And now they want a Vander Kane as well. No, thank you. And I want to move our best goal scorer usually. He puts up usually actually like 30 something goals a season, so... There is three straight wins, so now we're back on a winning terms again. There's another one. Divisional game against the Flames, which are actually ahead of us. We'll check that out in a sec. Alex Tuck doesn't like his performance. He likes that. And Jacobs is losing morale. I don't know if we want to even keep Jacobs, because we probably have some more defenders that could jump into the lineup, like Tate Olsen, or some of the youngsters that we drafted, so... There's an 8-7 to seven win over Calgary. That's a pretty high scoring game. 15 goals. <laughs> and now we're on a big winning streak where we've won 6 in a row and only to lose to the Ducks. But looks like we will actually maybe make the playoffs this year if we just keep it up throughout the remainder of the year. As I say that, we are now on a 3 game losing streak. And against Anaheim, and there's a win. Nice, because they were kind of fighting with the same amount of points as us. So we got a trade offer from now Detroit. So Detroit's willing to give um, backer, or well, they want backer and our first from this year for their um, first round pick next year. That's interesting too, because Detroit usually is in rebuilding stage kind of around this time or fighting to get in the playoff spot. So that first round pick might become something nice. Who knows? Um, but if we have any goalie injuries this season, uh, we'll call up Alexis Gravel and give him a chance to play his first NHL game. Just so he could get maybe some growth out of it or something. But now about February 1st, we are 29-20-3, so we definitely uh, turned it around a lot, but we still have a lot of regulation losses. Um, we do have... Because currently, guys, we have 61 points, 29-20-3, like I just said. Um... Arizona is the last play, or well, not last playoff team. San Jose currently is, and they have 10 points less than us. So if we don't get a big losing streak, we should be able to make the playoffs. We might even have a chance of winning our division if Calgary slows down, but who knows? They might go on a big winning streak. Um, but that is good news. Um, also, we probably have some player growth as our indiv team individual stats look way better than what they were so let's just go up right to the deadline and we'll see what's available and we'll also check the player stats for the season and the progress reports so Kevin Fitzgerald has been put on waivers let's see who is this dude I never even heard of him to be honest high AHL top two defender he was undrafted and he's an 80 overall oh I feel bad for San Jose because somebody's probably going to claim him He's not the best point producer, though, so he might be just a decent penalty clean kind of guy, but, um, yeah, I'm not going to claim him just because I'm not a douchebag and I don't like claiming people's, um, potential, uh, pro uh prospect kind of guys. So another trade offer, Backer and Richards for a second and a third, I'll decline that for now. But, like I said, if you guys think I should be making any of these trades, let me know. There's another trade offer for Backer and Richards. I guess those two prospects are kind of inter intriguing players for other teams there's a 7-5 win over Pittsburgh and we got to send out our scout again so let's go to the United States for forwards yeah because they have a lot of forwards six weeks and then we'll go overseas 
So Anton Rodin is back for the AHL club. That means Curtis Volk, I think. Yeah, I think it was Curtis Volk that was in that spot. Yep. So Anton Rodin could go there. Okay. Game against Carolina, and there's a 7-3 win. There's another trade offer. Pittsburgh, stop offering me the stupid trade offers. Why am I going to trade away a top six player when my team looks like they're going to be playoff bound? As we've won four in a row now, at least looks like it maybe even more considering we might have won some more in the last month it's just i don't see it on there uh i'm not trading kevin fiala no chance in hell i'm trading fiala not yet um anaheim wants to trade for those guys as well no thank you i don't want those guys playing for a divisional rival because they could come back to bite us in the ass in a couple years um and wow we've won six in a row again so yeah, I think we pretty much should be able to make the playoffs this year. So we might not even want to make any trades at the deadline, considering we are maybe a playoff team. So, um, but if you guys think there's any trades we should do, like I'll show you the trading block, um, then let me know. Is maybe we do want to ship out Hudden, or maybe we just want to let him play out this year, and then his contract runs at the end of the season. So, up at the trade deadline after this game against Arizona... There's another trade offer for Jake for Tannen. No, thank you. Pittsburgh's just hungry for a player, apparently. Or a winger of some sort. And it's a 4-3 loss. So, up at the deadline, we are 36-25-3. And, and our AHL club is 31-17-7. So, looks like our AHL club is definitely making the playoffs. So, we are currently still in second in our division with 75 points. Only 5 points back of Calgary for first. So... Despite having a bit of an off start, we won, win one, lost one, that type of thing. We still managed to uh, pull out a good uh, record, like halfway, more than halfway through the season. So let's take a look at our player stats first before we go to the trade uh, trading block. That way we could tell if we want to trade any of these guys. And then we'll also look at our team stats so then we could see if maybe we need like a penalty killer on the team or something like that. So leader in goals is Jake Vertanen, Evander Kane, and Kevin Fiala, all tied with 21 goals. Then you got Bo Horvat with 18, Tuck with 16, which is, I believe, a career high for him since he jumped in. Yep, career high year for Alex Tuck on that fourth line. Um, Mantha's got 14 as well on that third line. But it seems like everybody on our team is putting up at least a decent amount of goals. Like, look at that. Chris Wyman, he's growing as well, and... He's got 8 goals and 20 assists in, so 28 points in 64 games, which is fairly good for an 81 overall. So he simulates pretty decently. But the only player that's not doing well, it looks like, is Rupi Hints at the moment. Um, Point-wise, yeah, Bo Horvat, Kane, Fiala, so that first line is doing very well. And that second line looks like it's doing well as well as Patrick's there, but Patrick only has 8 goals, so... He seems to be more of a playmaker when he plays center. Um, Wyman. Yeah, so pretty much everybody on our team has at least 20 points, except for Hints. So maybe we find a better fourth line center f instead of Rupi Hints. Like maybe we trade Hints away for a center grinder or center. Well, not a power forward because we have a lot of them, but a center two way forward. Something for the fourth line. Uh, or we just leave it because maybe he's still playing good. Like he is a plus four, so. He might be doing something right. Um, let's just look at the plus minus actually. So, yeah, we have some badly minus players. Like, wow, our first line is really badly minus. I think, yep, minus 13 for, for Vander Kane, but he could be on a penalty killing line or something. Um, but Kevin Fiala is a plus 12, so our plus minus actually fluctuates quite a bit. Let's see just shorthanded goals for a second. So Chris Wyman's got two shorthanded goals out of his eight goals. Power play goal leader is Vander Kane, so that's nice. Okay, let's just check defenseman for points. We don't need to check for power or that. Let's see. So 40 points for UL EV, 18 goals, 22 assists. Very nice. 29 points for Stetcher. 28 for Liljegren. 21 for Hutton. 11 for Shea Theodore. 6 for Breezeball. And Jacobs has that one goal in 11 games. And goaltending... <clears throat> So Demko has pretty bad goals against average, but he's got a winning record at 29-19-3. at 
Um, 9-10 save percentage is okay. It's not the worst. And Vasilevsky's got a good goals against 2.29, but his record's kind of bad. 7-6-0 and oh, and a 9-21 save percentage. And both of our goalies have assists this year as well. So everybody's contributing this season. AHL-wise, let's just check AHL quickly as well. Alexis Gravel, his record is 21-10-3. Very nice. This guy's definitely going to be probably in the NHL next season, so maybe we have to trade away Vasilevsky in the offseason. Um, or, well, yeah, we have to trade away him in the offseason probably. And Pavlik's actually playing solid as this uh, backup goaltender, so maybe that's what's winning our games is our goaltending, or maybe it's our defenseman down there. I don't know. So, Balser's 40 points, Gaunt's 40 points, Tibbetts got 35. A couple other guys have been putting up some points. Um, let's see, defenseman. Tate Olsen's got 22 points, nice. Okay. So, yeah, let's just check the team stats and then we'll check the trading block and the progress reports in, and that will be it for this episode. So, team stats. And we'll sort by entire league. So, goals for again, 3.31. We are actually one of the best offensive teams. Our goals for per game is going up to 2.98. Uh, we are currently 6 for goals for. That's great. Um, goals against, we're probably pretty high up. Oh, and actually not. We're in the middle, 2.67. Our power play is 18%. So, it's actually gotten better, our power play, I think. And our penalty kill still looks around the same, but it is still actually one of the best. So, like top 10, I think. And our home record, 19-8-3, uh, so we're still playing very nice on home ice. But our away record is where we're struggling, 17-17-0. and zero. Okay, so let's quickly check the trading block, and we'll check progress reports. So, trading block uh, right here, I think, right? Yeah, trading block, browse trading blocks. I'll probably do some pre-scouting for the draft and stuff afterwards. So, Valisley, offensive defenseman, top six. That's not bad because we do want an offensive defenseman for the future, but yeah, I don't know what I, if I'd trade for him right now because of his overall. Wisniewski, Bergeron, Val, <laughs> Vajaholali. I don't even know how to pronounce that, to be honest, but he's a bottom six guy. Not bad. Schlemko, Quincy, Slavin, and Vandeveld. I don't know what Slavin's on the training block. Maybe they have better defensemen now. Uh, Como, Alada, and Seabrook. Pale Meyer, that's another bottom six guy. Grinder, too, that's not bad. Might be a good guy to pick up for the future. But we should start thinking about now more than the future. Ollie, Helm, and Desjardins. A lot of bottom six kind of guys. Demers and Marsh just so. Purcell and Martinez, Eric Fair, Tulipov, another prospect kind of guy, Johnny Boychuk, Henrik Lundqvist, uh, Kevin Klein, Blaine DC, and Vitali. Maybe we look for somebody that could help us with a playoff run. Uh, Jipchura, Frost, don't know who you are, Lake, or Lake, I should say, not Lake, uh, Manning and Nick Dowd, uh, Pitlick, Olsner, and Beck. Kostitsin. Wait, let's see the Kostitsin. Top 9, 2 way forward, center. That might be a good player to put in for our third line if he grows for the future, but who knows? Um, Louis Erickson's still there. No, I don't want to bring back Louis. Uh, Oliver, Crowder, and Armia. So if you guys see anything that I should trade for on that trading block, let me know. Um, like maybe we'll trade away Ben Hudden, but I don't really want to screw up our playoff chances with the record we currently have. So, um, that's who's available. Let's quickly just check, like I said, the progress reports, just cause I want to see who's been growing down there in the minors and who's like, who of our prospects, who's not even in the AHL is growing. So in the NHL modified, so Chris Wyman's growing. That is what I wanted to see. 16. Nolan Patrick's growing, Bo Horvat's growing, Sean Mathias is growing, and Shea Theodore is growing. Um, let's see what Nolan Patrick's growing in. Deking, hand-eye, puck control. This is face-offs growing, that's what I wanted to see. Nope. 
shot blocking. So he's getting more defensive, which is okay. Um, and Wyman, he's getting good on a lot of things. His shot accuracy and his shot, like, hardness and stuff like that is getting better. Pretty decent. He's only minus three for a penalty killer. Um, so that's the NHL. Let's just check in the system. So, Mikhail Albaline, who we drafted third overall last year, I think. He's grown to a 73 so far. So he might be NHL bound next season. Um, depending on how he grows during the off season and stuff like that. Um, Janus is growing a lot as well. He could be AHL bound next season. Uh, Belcourt, Grattan, a lot of these guys might not be in the NHL. Kim Backer's growing. That's nice. Bitten's growing. He could be NHL bound in a couple years too. Uh, as he's a 76. Pavlik's dropping off. Tibbet's growing. Rupp is growing. This guy I don't think is going to turn out to be anything. Roger Rupp, right wing grinder, low bottom six. It'd be funny to have him on the bottom six, but I don't think he's going to be that good. Um, I'm excited though for this guy though for sure. Noah Schneider, right wing, bottom six four, two way. He's already a 70 overall, so if he keeps growing, maybe he'll play on our bottom six line. Same with Lucas Elvins. Um, other than that, nobody else seems to be growing really that much. How about uh, Alexis Gravel? So Gravel has been growing by eight. What's he growing in? A lot of different positions. Okay, good. So yeah, hopefully he's ready for the NHL next season. He's actually a big goalie. I didn't even realize six foot three, two fifteen. So that's good news. He's basically like a Vasilevsky, and Demko is actually pretty big as well. So that is good. Okay. So, anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of our Canucks GMO.